Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So you're probably wondering why this video is longer than the usual one hour videos that I do. And that is because not only are we going to be killing green dragons in the wilderness for one hour, but we are also going to be killing players who are killing green dragons in the wilderness for one hour. Now these can be people who are grinding out green dragons for money, possible gold farmers, and possible bots, so don't feel too bad. And after all, we are in the wilderness and that's what the wilderness was made for, to PK in, so yeah. And besides, it won't only be me who's doing the killing, I will also be getting PK'd while I do the one hour of killing green dragons, so it'll be fair. Now instead of the usual max account that I use, I'm actually using the pure account that I mentioned in the last video. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the spot that we're going to, you really can't PK there as a maxed main. Most of the people that are killing the green dragons there are mid-level, so if I hop on the pier, we'll find a lot more fights that way. If I try looking for people to fight on the max main, I just I won't be able to attack anyone, so that's why I'm using the pier. And I've already made a green dragon video at the myth guild with the max account, so I thought it'd be interesting to change it up a little bit and try a different account, so here it is. And as you can see here, this is the gear setup that I'm using. I have the black dehyde chaps, I'm using the leather body and the coif because I have one defense on this account. And for the bolts, I'm using some mithril bolts. And of course, I have the anti-dragon shield to help out against the dragon breath, along with the extended anti-fire in my inventory to totally negate the damage from the dragon breath. I'm also bringing a ranging potion, a games necklace to teleport to the area, a looting bag to get more green dragon hide and dragon bones. And I'm also bringing some blighted super restores since they are cheaper than regular super restores. And for the food, I'm bringing 6 pieces of Karambwan. Now as for getting to the area, I will be showing you two different areas that you can go to to kill green dragons. The first one is using the burning amulet to teleport to the bandit camp. And this is actually the area that I would kill green dragons in. When I first came back to runescape, this is how I made some money. I would actually kill the dragons in this area. And this area is 13 to 12 wilds, so it'll be a lot easier to escape if you do get attacked. The only downside I guess is that there's only 3 dragons that spawn here, so it can get a little crowded. Now the next spot that I'll be showing you is the spot that I will be using throughout this video, and I'll use the games necklace to teleport to the corporeal beast, and then I'll just run west to the spot where we will be killing the green dragons. Now this spot is above 20 wild, so you can be risking some untradeables and stuff, which is why I don't recommend bringing them unless you have them imbued, but even then it's not really worth it. Um, I'd say this spot is pretty good for what we're going to be doing since we're going to be able to PK a lot more people here and there's a lot more green dragon spots here. There's at least five or six, so it's a lot nicer. And also here in this area are some more green dragons. There's a bunch over here, but I mean it's kind of out of the way of any teleports, so I don't really recommend using it. It's the same green dragons that I used during my Callista video to escape some PKers. Of course, there are some more green dragons scattered throughout the wilderness, but again, those aren't really worth killing. In my opinion, the two spots that I showed you are the best. And as you saw already, we did get attacked before we even reached the 5 minute mark, so yeah, this can get a little dangerous. Now because I am a 1 defense peer, I will be getting shredded by anyone who attacks me. As for the dragons, all I'm doing is praying melee and of course drinking the super restores when I need them. The anti-fire mixed with the anti-fire shield will also give me pretty much immunity from the dragon breath, so I don't have to worry about taking any damage. Now as for the drops here, we're mainly only going to be picking up the dragon bones and the green dragon hide. There are a few other items that we'll pick up if we do see them, like some herbs and some nature runes, and I think also in sold dragon heads along with some other items that you'll see throughout the video. Basically, if they show up on the ground in text, in white text, I'll pick them up because I think that means that they're worth more than a thousand with the rune light settings that I have set up. And once again, we have reached another point in the video where we are going to get attacked by some PKers. As you can see, they logged in here and I was attacking the green dragon. I saw them and I could have tallied out, but I don't know, part of me just wanted to, I guess, try and tank them if I could. 
Now normally it's not a big deal to tank AP care because these green dragons would normally tag them off, but since there was already someone here killing green dragons and there were two PKers that logged in, I really couldn't get a box on any dragons and I couldn't get them to attack the person that was attacking me. So instead I ran south into this graveyard area and these are going to be your best friends for escaping. So if you are getting attacked by multiple PKers and you can't get a box on a dragon, definitely run south into this area and get a box on a zombie. Now this is where I would highly recommend bringing either flowers or a ceridomen brew. Really anything that will get your stats down super low so that you don't kill the zombies. As you can see here, I tried kicking him but I was still doing damage and eventually I killed him. If you bring a brew or flowers, you greatly reduce the chances of you hitting against them so you can just box them until the teleblock runs out, but unfortunately I didn't have it so I had to run through the zombie area and luckily enough I did manage to escape. So again, it might be a good idea to bring flowers or any item that has really high negative bonuses for melee or maybe even bring a sterodome and brew since it will help you out with food and lowering your stats. Now later on when I start PKing the people here at the green dragons area, you'll see them run to areas that really isn't optimal. Um, there's some spots that I really don't recommend going to. Someone tried to run to the corp cave and run in there, but I guess they didn't know that if you're in combat with something you actually can't enter the cave. So definitely don't go there. Some other people also decided to just run south, run away from the dragons, and honestly that's one of the worst things you can do if it's just one person attacking you. Staying in the dragon area is the best thing you can do since they won't be able to attack you. If As long as you run around, the green dragons will tag off the person that is attacking you. But again, if it's multiple pe people attacking you like it was with me earlier, then definitely run to the zombies. And another thing, if you see a PKer log in while you're attacking a green dragon, just tell you out. Don't even bother risking it. Um, as long as you're still in combat with the dragon, they can't tell you block you. So if you see them, it's probably safe to just log out, unless you know for sure that you can tank them or fight back. I think it also goes without saying that it is important to have your protect item prayer at all times on, that way you don't lose any extra items. Even if you're not scald, you'll still protect an extra item, so it's worth to have it on. And the player attack options should also be set to hidden or right click only, that way you don't accidentally scull. Because people have been known to skull trick in this area, there's many ways you could do it, but I think the most popular way is probably to have two accounts that have very similar names and basically if you fight back, you'll accidentally skull whenever you attack the other account with the same name. So it's probably best not to fight back unless you know for sure that who you're attacking is the same person that was attacking you. But if you're here just to make money off of the green dragons, then go ahead and just set off your attack options to hidden or right click only. Now originally I was going to bring some sort of like weapon to fight back the PKers, whether it be Dragon Claws or something like that, but then I decided to just focus on killing the Green Dragons for the one hour because I knew that I'd get the hour of PKing anyways, and I could exact my revenge there. It's important to note though that when you are killing the Green Dragons, if you have a cannon, it's probably worth bringing that way you can get more kills per hour, and obviously finding an empty world all to yourself will speed up the amount of kills you can get as well since you don't have to compete. I decided not to use a cannon for this one hour because I'm not even sure if I have access to one, but also because I just didn't feel like doing it. And honestly, it wasn't even really needed because we still got more kills than what the wiki suggested, so that was pretty cool. And I did use range because range was a higher stat than my melee skills. I have 60 attack and 88 strength, and for range I have 92, so that's why I went with range instead of melee. And as we approach the end of this one hour of killing green dragons, we did in fact only get attacked twice during this one hour. Of course this can change for everybody, it really depends on your luck. Some days you will get attacked by a lot of people back to back and some days you won't get bothered at all. I did do this on a Saturday night so I'd say that getting attacked twice really wasn't that bad. And as you can see here the total loot is 662,000 from one hour of killing green dragons. Not bad at all. We can now go ahead and go to the Grand Exchange to sell all of our hard earned loot. And just because I wanted to speed it up, I did put the items in there for a lot lower than what they could go for. So if you do decide to do this money maker, go ahead and put the items in there for at least market price or maybe even slightly over. That way you can truly maximize your profit here at the Green Dragons. We also managed to get a hard clue scroll that we did not do for this video, but it is important to note that you can get hard clues from these dragons. 
and the total loot amounts to 653,000 GP from one hour, so again, not bad. We can now get into the dark and spooky part of the video, and that is us attacking other people who are killing the green dragons. Now right off the bat, I gotta say that PKing here at green drags is a lot more fun than killing the green drags themselves. It's just a lot more satisfying to kill someone who has done all the work for you instead of you having to kill like 20 or 30 dragons. You can just kill one person and hopefully they have a full inventory of green dehyde and dragon bones. The next couple clips that you see will just be me PKing here at the green dragon location and not only did we fight people who were killing the green dragons, we also got some fights with some other peers and other account builds that were here, like right here. This guy very rudely interrupted my kill and wanted to fight, so we gave him one. Now I didn't practice before doing this one hour, I actually just jumped in immediately after I put a bond on my peer. So I was very rusty and again I'm not even that good at PKing, so I fully expected to die during this one hour, either to a green dragon bot that was fighting back or a PKer like this. But luckily RNG was on our side and we did manage to hit some pretty high numbers here. And yes, I know I am using a dragon sword. I don't have monkey madness completed so I can't use dragon skimmies and actually dragon swords are pretty good, especially now since they're so cheap. I think I bought this for like 45k so that was pretty crazy. Back when I made this pure, I would actually buy dragon longswords, and I believe the dragon sword was worth over a mil back then, so it was pretty interesting to see it this cheap now. One thing I gotta say about pure PKing is that it's a lot harder in terms of prayer switching because I don't have piety, so whenever I go in for a melee spec, I have to turn on two prayers instead of one, and they're kinda out of the way. As you can see here, the guy I guess gave up or was out of food and went to go box the zombies that I used previously, so. I'll take that as a win even though we didn't get the kill. Honestly, I just consider it a win if I don't die during this one hour, so yeah, my expectations aren't that high. As for the method of PKing here at Green Drags, it's really simple. Basically you just hop worlds until you find someone that is in your level range, you get the TB ready and then as soon as they finish off the dragon that they're fighting, you launch the TB at them, you entangle them, and then you just proceed to do as much damage as possible. Now if you get really lucky, you'll get those people who have auto retaliate on, which means that as soon as you launch a TB, they'll run at you with their melee attack, which will pull them out of the dragon's range and you won't get PJ'd. Most of the time the people who have it on are the bots, and they usually just run south, they really don't have a method of escaping, so they're usually the easiest kills to get. Now for the most part, I tend to use only the range and melee styles just to save money because using the runes is more expensive than using bolts or using a melee weapon that doesn't use any money. So really the only time that you'll see me use magic is whenever they're praying accordingly or if they are in tanky armor. Now here's another kill where I was fighting someone who was also PKing. I was hopping around and this guy left the person that he was currently attacking and attacked me even though I wasn't scald, which was kind of weird. I guess he just assumed that I would have better loot and honestly he was in a much better position to win than I was. As you can see he had a god sword which means he had at least 75 attack and I think he was a zerker? I mean I honestly don't know, I'm just assuming he's got that cool helmet and he was obviously a higher level than me so yeah the odds weren't exactly in my favor. But we persevered and we fought him anyways because I just wanted a chance at some nice loot. I gotta say though that god sword was pretty intimidating, I was ready for him to AGS spec me down to 0 HP in one hit, and that's why you see me putting on the melee on as fast as possible. Now somehow, some miracle, I don't know if it was by RNG, or maybe there was a little bit of skill in there, we actually managed to, again, I want to say beat him, because he did entangle us, run under us, and then log out. So in my book, that was two wins that we have now. And that one was a lot more satisfying because he was a higher level than me, so that was pretty cool. Now something that I highly recommend doing that I only did once throughout this one hour was to make sure that you drink a dose of antidote and a dose of anti-fire because you really don't want to get poisoned out here and you don't want to get hit by a dragonstone spec. Now back when I first made this account, I did use Carolanger teleports to teleport closer to this area 
It's closer than the game's necklace teleport, but now it's a lot more expensive. I believe the tablets are close to 12k each, so it's definitely not worth using unless you already have the portal in your house. Now something that was pretty annoying during this one hour was looting, and that was because you couldn't left click the pile. I mean you could, but you would be picking up a lot of the junk, and if you peek at somebody who had a full inventory of dragon bones and green dehyde, you would miss a lot of that and pick up all the worthless jewelry and snakeskin bandanas, so that was that was a pain. This meant that I had to right click the loot pile a lot of the times, or just close the bag, pick up all the junk, drop it, and then step onto it, open the bag, and then left click, so it was kind of a pain. Now I did consider bringing dragon claws for this trip, but I just didn't trust myself since it was my first time PKing in a long time, and because my connection hasn't been that reliable over the past few days. Also, this clip is a perfect example of why it was a great idea not to bring the Dragon Claws. I was fighting this guy and I suspected something was up because he did have an armor crossbow and he was actually praying accordingly so he obviously knew what he was doing and out of nowhere he busts out the Dragon Claws and I don't know how I survived. I ate a shark and brewed up at the same time and by some miracle I managed to survive this encounter which was pretty crazy. I did in fact get smited and if I had brought claws and he hit a little bit higher, I would have lost my own pair, which would have sucked greatly. I think it's going to be a long while before I trust myself to bring a pair of dragon claws into the wilderness whenever I am sculled. Especially on a pure account that has such low prayer, it's so easy to get smited out on this one with 52 prayer. It's not like my main where I can pretty much never get smited on there, but with peers it's a whole different story. Now, I don't have a POH on this account, so I wasn't using an ornate rejuvenation pool or anything. I did have a ring of dueling on me so that I could teleport to clan wars and go through the portal and restore my stats there. Now, there was a change to that since the last time that I PK'd on this account, and that is that you don't lose your skull whenever you go through the portal anymore. Which is honestly good for the game because I think there was a lot of people who would fight in the wilderness and then they would just go to the portal, lose your skull immediately, and then go back to the wilderness and fight the same person without any risk. So I do think that it was necessary. And as you saw here, this person decided to run to a very interesting area. I don't know where they thought they were going, but it didn't end well for them. And something that I have to remember for the next time that I make a video like this is to turn off the idle notifier uh, flashing that you see on the screen. It flashes every time I get a kill because I think the game takes a screenshot automatically whenever you get a kill and since I have that idle notifier on the screen will flash for about two seconds in red every time I get a kill which is kind of annoying but I guess I'm so used to it now that I just don't even see it until I'm looking at the recording and I gotta say this is by far my favorite clip throughout the one hour this guy was so tanky I thought he was gonna get away for sure as you can see I have him frozen there bolted him down to 2 HP, I bring out the DDS to finish him off, and I hit zeros, back to back to back. I mean, I really thought he was going to get away after I bolted him, and I hit, what do you know, another zero. So now I'm just chasing him, trying to catch a freeze, I've already splashed once, and it looks like he's going to get a gap on me. I just, I couldn't believe it. I literally had to type out wow, because I was like, this, there's no way this guy's going to get away from me. So I follow him. I splash yet again, and now there's just no hope. Now I know that he's gonna, he's gonna get away. But I continue to follow him because he was poisoned and I thought, hey, maybe he won't log out and he'll just die from poison. Or maybe he might run out of stamina and I'll be able to catch another entangle, which didn't happen because unfortunately he ran out of the zone that I could attack him in. I needed to be in deeper wilderness and he had made it out, as you see there in the chat box. But still, I followed him because you never know, I might get the kill from the poison. And luckily enough, he did in fact die from the poison. And honestly, I deserve that kill. There's no way that he should have survived that. He tanked so many hits, three dragon dagger specs, and the bolt. There was no way that he was going to get away. And we are now approaching the end of our one hour of PKing. This will be the last kill, and then afterwards we can go ahead and compare the amount of money that we made killing the green dragons and the amount of money that we made killing the people, killing the green dragons. As you can see here, this is the loot tracker. It says that we got 1.19 mil from the 
12 kills that we got. It said 15 kills, but three of those were zombies. So we did manage to kill 12 people here in one hour. And honestly, this can change, you know, depending on your luck. You might kill more people in an hour, you might kill less. This was just how much I got in my hour. And then here's a look at the supplies that we used. And I'm also going to add in the cost of blighted super restores and entangles and whatnot, because for whatever reason, those aren't counting in the supply tracker as of right now. So if we subtract the amount of money that we spent on supplies, which was 91,090 GP from the total amount of money that we made, which was 653,042 GP, we get a grand total profit of 561,652 GP from killing green dragons for one hour. Now if you compare that to what the wiki was estimating, we actually did make a decent amount more than what it said. This of course was going off of 100 kills and we got over 120 kills, so yeah, not bad. Now as for how much money we made PKing at Green Dragons, we spent approximately 263,054 GP on supplies. And then as for the profit, I'm just going to put that we made a mil, even though it did say we made around 1.2 mil, but of course I didn't pick up every single item. so. I'll just decide on a mill. That gives us a grand total of 736,946 GP from one hour of PKing at Green Dragons. So not only was it more fun to PK than it was to kill the Green Dragons, but we also managed to make more money while doing it. So if you have an account with around the same level as mine was, then it might be worth it to try PKing out. In my opinion, it's a lot more satisfying letting someone else do all the work and then you just kill them for the hopefully full inventory of green dragon hide and dragon bones. I just want to say that I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription and as always I will catch you guys in the next episode.